This is uh, hemp dogbane, also known as dogbane or uh, Indian hemp. It's very easy to locate. All you need to find is a sunny field which is laying waste and the field will typically be loaded with uh, dogbane or Indian hemp. It has a reddish brown stalk and you can see the seed pods here at the top uh, grow in pairs and they're loaded on the inside with fluffy little down. The down lights easily with a uh, fire steel. It is also an excellent coal extender. Dogbane likes to grow in full sunlight and it really does like moist soil. When you can find it uh, growing in moister soil, it'll be larger. In drier places, it tends to be kind of small. The main use of dogbane is to make cordage and it's been used as a cordage plant for thousands of years. In this field, I can afford to be picky and only uh, grab the largest stalks that make the best cordage. To make good cordage, you have to remove the outer skin from the dogbane stalks where it gets in the way when you roll the cordage and makes lumps in it and things. Uh, it actually binds the fibers together into a flat piece and you want them to roll around. So what you have to do is scrape this outer covering away with a knife. Some people try and remove the fiber first and then remove the outer skin. I find it easier with this to just uh, scrape it off and then remove the fibers once the stalk is all cleaned up. I just take it in sections about four inches at a time. You just want to keep your knife angled like this when you're scraping because if you angle it like that you'll cut in and, and break your fibers. So you just got to be careful when you're doing it with a knife. Once you have the outer covering off, you split the stalk by squeezing it into four nice little sections and pull it in half. And each of these will split into a quarter as well. Okay, that one broke off. Now you can work with it two at a time like that by breaking it and pulling these short little sections of wood away. You get nice long fibers eventually. It's kind of fiddly and tedious work, but if you try and go too fast, you'll usually end up making shorter fibers and just increase your workload. This is the fiber extracted from two stalks of dog vein. You can see this is really good stuff for making cordage. Dog is kind of fuzzy when you work with it. There's no way to avoid that. What I try and do is comb out some of the more fuzzy places and make sure there's no little chunks of wood stuck to it before I make it into cordage. Working with dog bane, it's much easier to work when it's wet and what I like to do, I don't have any, I don't have any water up here in the woods. So I'm just going to dampen this with a little snow that nice and wet. Now what I like to do is pre-roll it. Now the way I roll cordage is a little different. I like to roll it in my hands. I don't thigh roll it. What I do is I start it out a little bit like this and just give it a roll in the direction I want it to go, which is always away from me. And once it's pre-rolled like that, it makes it very easy to judge the size of the material and it's already going in the direction I want it to go and they don't tangle around each other as much when you're working with it it makes the job go a lot easier I started this piece of cordage yesterday my idea is to make a piece that I can either use as a boot lace or as a uh, for a fire bow um, I've got about oh maybe a 25, 30 inches of it so far. Okay, now this is the piece that's already pre-rolled and what I'm going to do is continue splicing this on. I have my short end and my long end here and I uh, go ahead and get that wet with some snow. As 
just easier to work when it's wet. It doesn't seem to fray so much and takes a tighter roll. Now you want to leave enough space you can trim that off and uh, since both these twists are going the same way I just pretty much unroll them a little bit and uh, get them flattened together and then continue making cordage. My cordage technique is a little different than most people are used to. Uh, the reverse twist method of doing each one to me kind of gives me carpal tunnel and I think it's a little bit slow like that. I roll the one tighter away from me, pinch it underneath my middle finger, grab the other ply, roll that tighter, and then twist the two together. And for me, this goes very fast. Because I constantly have my fingertips on the cordage, I can sense right away when things are getting thick, or when one side is getting thick or thin. Like I can feel the side that's away from me right now is getting a little too thin, so I'm going to back up a little bit and add another piece of thinner material. See, with the cordage already pre-rolled, I know exactly how thick that piece is going to be, and it gives me a good idea of uh, which piece to grab next. When my free end gets long enough that it starts draping on the ground, I like to tie it up in a little bundle like that. It has to spin, or else it gets knotted up and you get kinks in the rope. So I just tie it up in a little bundle to keep it off the ground, and when it hits the ground again, I just roll it up and keep going. Don't be afraid to splice material. As you feel one side getting thin, just grab a little piece, add more into it, and keep it a uniform thickness. If you don't have a uniform thickness, then one side will start wrapping around the other, and the strong side of it will take all the force inside the string, and really only half is strong that way. Now coming down to the end here, I'm all out of material. I decide to make more, but I think I'm going to finish this one off. What I normally just do is make a knot. Cut that nice and tight. And cut off the little tail. You don't have to knot it. Once that tension is trapped in there, it's not going to unravel itself. But I, I just like to keep a knot in there. It makes it easier to work with when I'm trying to pass the end back through the rope or uh, do other things with it. That original 25 inches or so, which I had before. See, I've got exactly six feet and two inches of cordage here, which is plenty for a boot lace or for a bow drill. This might be strong enough for an actual bowstring, though two ply bowstring is not a not the best idea. It's better to make it with three ply. Now you have your splices all down the rope. All down the string you've got splices all over the place and these you can trim off with a knife just being very careful to not trim not cut the rope in half sometimes I'll use a toenail clipper if I'm working inside especially where I keep my toenail clipper 